I know you're looking at me and thinking, I'm really couldn't have a married daughter. Well, he's going to be around this summer, so he is. Um, but um, absolutely beautiful, and invitations are all important. With having my daughter's marriage, I know the importance of invitations. I, I just want to speak about that for a moment, because I can remember the process of who will we invite. And, and then there's that awkward moment, well, you have to invite him. He's your daddy's uncles, cousins, brothers, you know, and... You know, and he's, or he's, you know, I know he's weird, but he has to come. Well, the interesting thing is that could be any one of us today. It could be you or it could be me. But invitations are so important. There was a marriage in the Bible. It's one of the probably most famous stories in the Bible. It's found in John's Gospel, chapter 2. And it's a really famous story because Jesus is actually invited to this marriage. You'll have heard the story, it's called The Wedding at Cana, and it's found in John's Gospel in chapter 2, and verses 1 through 11. We're not going to take time to read that today, but I know most of you will know the story. The interesting thing is, Jesus was there because his mother was invited to the wedding, and the amazing thing is, in Jesus' day, in first century Palestine, if you had a wedding, the whole village was invited. So whether or not that was the reason that Jesus was invited that day, it shows us that even in those days, invitation was really, really important. And I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody when we say thank you for allowing us the privilege of being here at your wedding today. It's absolutely beautiful and bless you. And you stand at the door of your future together. Thank you uh, for the invite and personally for to allow me to, to take part in the, the service with you. I really bless you for that. But there's someone else who is always invited to weddings. And, and well, in many weddings is invited. When I get married, we get married on and I, nearly 26 years ago, nearly 27 years ago, uh, October this year, and we get married in not Presbyterian Church, just not far from here in East Belfast. And the reason we get married there, I, I didn't I believe in God at that particular time in my life, but God meant nothing in my life at that particular time. But we get married there because it was a beautiful old Gothic building and we thought it would be brilliant for photographs. So we get married there. So in some respects, we invited God to our wedding and that we had a church service. We had it in the building and we presumed that if it was in church, well, God would be there because it was his house and we couldn't really have it without him being present anyway. But the interesting thing was this, that God didn't just want invited to the wedding. He was invited to the marriage. And I don't think that's something that we, we, we probably don't realise that God doesn't just want invited for the day that we, that we join the knot, so to speak, if we use some of the cliches of getting married. But he in actual fact wants to be invited all the way into the marriage, all the way into our home, all the way into our lives. And, and to finish before Billy comes and reads, just one, one thought about that. And I'll tell you a little story I heard many, many years ago. It was about, uh, a, a, this man was driving his car, and it was a long, long time ago, it was when, when very few people had cars, and you had to crank them at the front and all that. You remember them sort of cars, probably few. you. <laughs> he had them. And, 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 and he, he, he broke down a lot, he broke, broke down along the road going somewhere. And, and he thought, well, there's no way anything's going to happen here. Because, you know, nobody had cars, nobody knew about cars. But to his amazement, to his absolute amazement, ten minutes, another car pulled up. And this guy got out of the car and he walked over to him. And he said, do you haven't bothered with a car? He says, yeah. He says, I should be able to help you. So they lifted the bonnet and the, the work for a couple of minutes. And he said to the guy, try it now. And he got round the front and he cranked it. And the car started. And this guy, amazingly, suit, shirt, pack, he said to him, I said, my name's Henry Ford. He said, I made that car. He says, there isn't anything about that car that I don't know about. And he says, and there isn't anything in that car that I can fix. And I thought, wow. Do you know what's amazing about that story? You see, if God made marriage, then there's nothing God doesn't know about marriage. And there's nothing in marriage that God can fix. So that's why God wants invited, not just to the wedding day, but invited to the, wed to the marriage. Invited to your home. Invited into your life. Not just you two guys today, but, but, but each, and every, each and every one of us. 
And that's my simple thought today. It's good to have God in your mind. Because God made minds. And no matter what happens, God is able to sort your marriage out. If we'll submit in life to God. And not just for the things we're looking for. Does that make sense? And I honestly my plea to you just is this. As well as having God turn up today. And tie them into your marriage and into your home. And into life with you two guys and love you. And just watch him and see what God can do in your marriage. Well, he's going to come and he's going to read the word of God for us. And then Suzanne, our worship leader in Bangor, England, is going to sing for us while Andrew and Tanya come and they sing the marriage register. So let's listen to Billy. We'll remain on our seats. We'll listen to Billy reading the word of God. And then Suzanne will sing and play a song which has been requested by Tanya and Andrew. While we uh, take a moment or two because the photographer will want to take some photographs and that. So if you could just bear with us, and then we'll get them ready for the processional light, and you'll be able to get all your photographs, and you'll be able to see them, and everything else. So let's relax, and let's just wait as we listen to God. Though I speak with the tongues of men, and of angels, that have not love, I become sounding brass, or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, and nothing. And though I bestow all my Jews to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have, have not love, the prophets be not. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, they will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be gone away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away all these things. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Amen. Amen.